Am I the a-hole for refusing to go back to the family business after they kicked me out? Backstory: My uncle recently retired and gave a medium-sized business to my cousin. The first thing he did was not renewing my contract in the company and gave new positions to his friends and immediate family. I was mad about why I didn't get a new contract, even when I managed to hit my key performance indicator all the time, while his friends and immediate family didn't even hit their KPI most of the time. He just said that things are changing with him in charge, that sadly my services are no longer needed. I was pissed, but accepted my fate, and I began to search for a new job. A competitor company took interest of me and hired me. I joined the company as the pay is good, and I have been working for the company for two years and I managed to gain two positions up and beginning to be more involved with managerial roles. My cousin's company didn't do well. And during a family reunion, he asked me to come back as he needs people like me to save the company. I refused, and it caused some family fighting. As some said, I don't care about family, I only care about money. I replied with, what's stopping him from kicking me out again when the company is back on its feet? Sadly, that causes more conflict and fighting. Now my family and cousin's family is fractured because of this. Am I the a-hole for not helping my cousin's company after he kicked me out in the first place? Now for the top comments. Not a hole. He kicked you out when things were going well. And now wants you to help when things aren't anymore. You're entirely right to assume he would do it again if you helped him fix things at the company. People put too much stock in forgiving family no matter what. Sometimes families consist of a-holes like your cousin, and you are under no obligation to help him screw you over again. Not a hole. I'm gonna be blunt here. What you describe is a group of leeches, not family. Screw them, as they will screw you in a heartbeat when they get back on their feet. Did they yell at him for not caring about family and only caring about money when he fired you? No? Then they don't have a leg to stand on. You say, I didn't hear you yelling at him when he fired me and didn't care about family. Only money. So obviously I'm not family. So why would I go and bail him out? Next time you are so worried about family treating each other with value, you better look at all the family and treat them equally. Not today, home. You have a job that is working well for you right now. You're not under any obligation to leave that job to take a job because it's family. Where was the outrage when you were let go? Take care of yourself. If you don't feel it's worth leaving your current job, then don't. Plus, when the cousin totally tanks the business and it goes through a bankruptcy sale of assets, perhaps OP should consider buying it up for pennies on a dollar. Then do a successful reboot of the business. Not day home, and don't you dare go back there. Cousin just wants to use you. He doesn't give a damn about you. How the hell he gonna complain that you don't care about family? He didn't care about family much when he fired you, did he? Screw that guy. Not day home. Also, what was his answer for what's stopping him from kicking you out again? That a family was so important, why were you let go? He said something along the lines of, my position is no longer relevant as they are not focusing on that part of the business anymore when he kicked me out. Then during the reunion, he said that it's not fair for him to make promises of not kicking me out as business changes and to give some examples that he also needs to kick some of his longtime friends because of company restructuring. So it's not fair to give preferences to family members, the guarantee of not kicking me out again. Thinking about it... It's all more like bad management from his part, rather than the employees not performing well. Next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for refusing to refund my parents after they spent over 2000 to come to my wedding? I'm 25 female never been in good terms with my parents since my mother, 45 female, has a princess complex that my father, 50 male, has no trouble condoning. Ever since I was a child, I had to make my happy moments about my mother because she gave me the gift of life. I had to get her presents on my birthday, my graduations, my most amazing moments in life. And when my college letter came, my father congratulated my mother instead of me and took her to celebrate. He showered her with gifts for the accomplishments I did and I only got a good job baby every single time. Not only that, my mother was obsessed with the men I dated. She's young looking. It has taken care of herself all these years. This has caused people to believe that we're sisters instead of mother-daughter. And can't stand that anyone prefers me over her. Some of my boyfriends had broken up with me since they realized they were in love with my mother. I don't even know if she had cheated on my father with them or what. And at this point, I don't care. When I left for college, 
I went low contact and just did bare minimum, so they kept paying for my expenses. I know, horrible, but meh. At some point, I met my now husband, Alan, 26 male. And at first, I was reluctant to introduce him to my parents since I thought I knew how it was all gonna end. It took me two years to finally take him home, and I don't know if it was all the things I told him about them or just luck, but Alan never gave her a second look, and did a bare minimum too. Obviously, this pissed my mother off, and when I was 24 after Alan proposed to me, I went no contact with them after a fight. Because Alan had the audacity to not get her something in a day so special for her. Planning the wedding made me sad. It made me realize that all these years I waited for them to change and, as naive as I was, I thought that my wedding could be the last chance. I called them a few months before, told them that I would love if my father walked me down the altar, and even offered to pay for their flights here and all of their expense. But I just asked them to please, please send me a photo of their outfits before they came, because I knew how my mother was. They fought at first, calling me disrespectful and all of that, but ended up accepting. They did it and mom had a blue slash purplish dress. Nothing weird, so I said yes. But when they arrived, she was wearing a long white dress. Very bridal looking. And I just couldn't. I asked them to leave. And after Alan threatened them to call the police, they did. After the party, they sent me the receipts to their flights, my mother's dress and the hotel. I just replied with an F you and told them that since they've tricked me into thinking that my mother had another dress, then I wouldn't be paying them back. Not today, Hall. Your parents are just creepy weird AF by having your mother own every single accomplishment of your life. Sounds like a complete mind screw to deal with. So, absolutely nothing wrong with what you did when they tried to pull that crazy gaslighting on your wedding day. Congrats on all your accomplishments that you earned, and on finding a partner that treats you right. Not today, Hall. Your mom must have some low self-esteem to try and attach herself to all of your accomplishments. Great job in putting her in her place when she showed up wearing white at your wedding. Wait until you have kids. She will probably want a push present once you give birth. It's called a glamour shower, where the grandma has a party and acts like she's one giving birth and gets baby gifts. Not today, Hall. It sounds like your mother is a narcissist and your father is an enabler. It's sad. I would stay no contact for them. And there are a few subreddits for narcissistic parents. Good luck. Also, you might want to go to some therapy to get to a good place about your relationship or lack thereof with your parents. Opie offered to pay for their plane trip if they came to the wedding, but she didn't agree to them trying to upstage her at her wedding. Also, the hotel and dress weren't even in the original deal. Not day home. You made your expectations clear. Your mother chose to violate the most basic etiquette rule of weddings, and she deserved to miss out. Seriously, even a person living under a freaking rock knows not to wear white as a wedding guest. Hopefully your wedding was still a good day, and a good memory for you. Not today, Hall. No mother in her right mind would show up to their daughter's wedding in a white, bridal-looking dress. That is your day, and she did the old bait and switched figuring on turning it into her day. No. Just no. Not sure what parents expect to be provided reimbursement to attend an offspring's wedding anyway. But if your dad can afford to get her nice gifts for everyone else's accomplishments, certainly can't afford a fare. I would have done the same. Next story. Am I the a-hole for telling my mother-in-law if she gives a photo as a housewarming gift, it will be returned? My husband and I are throwing a small housewarming party to celebrate buying our family home. There is a small problem that I want to know if I'm the a-hole over. My husband's parents are divorced and remarried with step-families. My husband is the youngest of three boys, and all three of them had a hard time with the divorce and remember their childhood before the divorce fondly. My in-laws don't, of course. What happened is my husband and I had some childhood photos up in our home. The two he put up are from before the divorce, back when he was the happiest, and when he felt like his family was his family and he wasn't part of a broken family. Almost 20 years later, the three of them still feel like they have a broken family instead of a bigger family. There are some from after the divorce too, but you don't really see them as easily as the big ones on the wall. It bothers both of them, but my mother-in-law has been especially pushy about getting a big photo from her happiest time, when she married her current husband, and she has tried to get us to take one before. So, she mentioned having a very special gift for our housewarming, and how she was hoping I would take care of it. I asked her if it was a family portrait. She was confused why it would matter, so I told her my husband had been clear 
and she wasn't going to get it in around me. And in fact, if she gives one, it will be returned to her. She told me it's incredibly rude to reject a gift, and even ruder to reject one before it has been given. But I feel that it's rude to use a gift as a way to get your own way in someone else's house. Am I the a-hole, though? Not the a-hole. Seems like you have clearly communicated to mother-in-law that the new family portrait would make your husband uncomfortable slash sad. If that truly is the gift, it seems to be more for the mother-in-law's happiness than your family. Exactly. This isn't a gift for Opie and her husband. This is a gift from mother-in-law for mother-in-law. It is an obligation to Opie and her husband. You don't gift someone an obligation. Mother-in-law is selfish if that was the gift. And if that wasn't the gift, her reaction would have made that clear. Not today, Hall. Not today, Hall, but I probably would have handled it differently. If she gave you the gift at housewarming, I would have addressed it then, or possibly after then, and returned it to her, or had your husband returned it to her. No need to stir up trouble before it appears. Probably more effective to return it after with a polite note, from her son, that while the picture may represent her at her happiest, to him it represents the worst part of his childhood, and he would rather not have such a blatant reminder of that staring him in the face in his own home 24-7. Or just put it in storage or something. And when mother-in-law asks about why it isn't in prominent display, tell her the truth then. Everyone sucks here. You and your husband are entitled to have whatever pictures you want in your home, but his attitude sucks. Happy couples don't just wake up one day and say, hey, let's get divorced. The fact that your husband and his brother see it this way tells me that your in-laws put a lot of work into putting on a good front for his kids until they just couldn't take it anymore. It's one thing for a little kid to want his mommy and daddy together, but your husband is old enough to know how adults' relationships work and should be glad his parents are happy now. I can't imagine how hurtful your husband's immature attitude is to your mother-in-law that she isn't allowed to be really happy. You suck for starting a fight over something that hasn't even happened when you could have just put the picture, if that's even what she gives you, in a closet. Your mother-in-law sucks a little for wanting to push something onto you because it sounds like you probably are getting this picture. But I'm giving her a little bit of a pass since she's had to put up with her son's poor attitude for 20 years. My husband is glad they're happy now. He is happy for his parents but he wasn't happy at the same pace they were. Their happiest memories are being of their second marriages, with their blended family. But my husband and his brother's happy memories are off when their family was together, and they thought things were perfect. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hall for flipping out over expensive dog food? I have a two-year-old corgi named Lila. She's perfectly healthy and was perfectly content with the dog food I have always purchased her. My boyfriend dog sat for me because I had to go on a week-long business trip to Dubai. But the trip ended up getting extended by three days due to flight delays and cancellations following a pretty nasty storm. Keep in mind that I buy the giant bag, 50 pounds, of dog food and it literally lasts damn near a month. This bag of food costs me roughly $40, depending on which store I go to and all that. That recommended brand, not cheap off brand. The only reason I get it that cheap is with my discount because they sell it at her groomers. When I get home, I notice that my dog has put on a bit of weight. Not enough to be concerning, but her belly's definitely pudgier. When I get to my kitchen pantry, I notice that her 50-pound bag of food isn't touched. And besides it is a 25-pound bag of organic steak and chicken something, a rather bag of food with a tag of $79.99 still on it. He purchased it with the money I left him for her in case of emergencies. We have porcupines that roam my yard, so I was thinking emergency vet situation. Not emergency, she needs better food. Apparently, when I was gone, my boyfriend's mother came by, not in common, and basically told him the food I had been feeding her was crap and convinced him to switch over to this expensive brand. Not only that, but she also started feeding my dog literally cut-up meat, like stuck steak chunks or chicken chunks into my dog's bowl. Since I have been home, my pup has outright refused to touch the food she has eaten her entire life. And now she has even started trying to get up on the table when I'm preparing meals to try and get the human food. A habit I broke her for nearly a year and a half ago. To say I am absolutely freaking livid would be an understatement. The $40 bag I buy her is still a stretch due to my financial state. Just went through a budget cut and property tax increase of 9.8%. So I flipped out. I only flipped when my boyfriend's mom came over and immediately rummaging through her purse and grabbing steak bits that she brought over from a dog. I've always been clear on no table scraps. Always. The dog food was just the icing on the cake. 
and I flipped. Now I look absolutely crazy and have been deemed a crazy a-hole. Am I the a-hole? Not today, ho. Your boyfriend and his mother completely overstepped by changing your dog's food without your knowledge or consent. And they stomped all over your boundaries by giving your dog table scraps. Agreed. Personally, if I were in Opie's shoes, endangering the health of my pet like this would be grounds for an immediate dumping. The fact that he bends so easily to his mom's whims isn't helping his case either. 100%. I'm a dog sitter, and I would never change or add any food items without explicit permission. Boyfriend is damn lucky that dog wasn't allergic to any ingredients in a new diet. Not to mention, you shouldn't just switch diets. It needs to be done gradually. Plus, adding in the table scraps? Oh, hell no. Boyfriend's mom would not be allowed in my home. Maybe not boyfriend either. There may be some apologizing, real apologies with acknowledgments of what was wrong, and clear boundary setting with his mom may earn his place back. Not day home, and don't worry about your pup starving. Put down her food and she will eventually get hungry enough to eat. Even if it takes a few days, she'll be fine, really. I'd use the expensive stuff as a mix-in until it's gone, just so it doesn't go to waste. Not day home. Wait until you have children with his mother-in-law. She's a special person. That's what I was thinking. This is a future grandmother that doesn't give a damn what mom wants for the kids. Any dad who will do whatever his mommy wants him to, 